Let's show the mechanism for this reaction. This is what we call halo hydrogenation because we're putting in a halogen and a hydrogen. Was this Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov? Markovnikov. And, and what is it that makes it Markovnikov? Why is the electronegative atom attacking the, less, the more substituted carbon? Because the electronegative atom is attacking second, uh, and when it attacks, we have a carbocation which we'd like to form on the more substituted carbon because alkyl chains stabilize that carbocation. Good. When we attacked this carbon here, did we form a stereocenter? No. And when we attacked this carbon, did we form a stereocenter? So how many products do we get? One. Just one. But that's something that we always have to check. Okay. Looks like we're very comfortable with that. Let's draw the product or the products here. If you want, you can go through the whole mechanism, but if you feel comfortable, you can just draw the product, draw the final but product. But you guys want to attach that, right? That's just in the... Yeah, I always have that. So like I said, you can do the whole mechanism, or if you want, you can just draw the product.
looks good. Can I say the last step of your reaction? good. Okay, that's good. You remembered that mechanism well. I think you left out the electron pushing arrows for this first step that show how we get the peroxides here. So we get the peroxides, then we generate the BR. Remember, we can think of both of these together as two initiation steps. Because in order to get to the main reaction, we have to produce the bromine radical over here. So the bromine attacks. Now, why is the radical ending up over here? Because this is the more substituted. So that's important. And you saw that here, the bromine was forming a stereocenter. Since we're forming a stereocenter, we're going to get two different products on the wedge and on the dash. But is this forming a new stereocenter? No. So we don't need to worry about stereochemistry here. I showed the hydrogen attacking the compound with the bromine on the wedge, but we would also get the enantiomer. Where the hydrogen attacks the compound with the bromine on the dash. So we get the two different products here. So is this Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov? And you want to compare that with this example without the peroxides. Without the peroxides, we got the same exact addition, hydrogen and bromine, but it was Markovnikov. And the whole reason for the difference is that without the peroxides, the bromine attaches second. So it attaches to the more substituted carbocation. But with the peroxides, the hydrogen attach attaches second. So it attaches to the more substituted radical over here. Only thing you left out is I think you left out this radical product from the last step. That's good to put in because what's this radical product going to do? It's going to go back and do another of these propagation steps. So if these are the two initiation steps. We could call these initiation one and initiation two. Well, then we have two propagation steps. And now the two propagation steps just keep repeating themselves over and over again. And we saw that we usually don't bother showing termination for this reaction. So it looks like you're very really comfortable with that. That's good. That's a complicated mechanism, so it's good that you're remembering.